What's up everybody, welcome back to the unboxing experience. Today we have a really cool, unique-ish machine here, which is the Burnett B05 Academy. Now, a couple weeks back we did a Burnett on the channel, but this one's different in the fact that it is a mechanically driven machine. So that means there is no computer, there's not really the bells and whistles, it is a metal machine. Which, we're also going to see if that's actually true. Not only that, it has some really unique features that it comes with extra things that most machines in this category never come with. So we're really excited to open it and uh, let's get started. So guys, let me just kind of get off the plastics off this machine, look at it here for a second. Now, right off the bat, you don't get a machine really with color most days. So it's nice to have a little bit of blue here, a little bit of blue on the back as well. So that's nice to get a little bit of color here. But if you look at the machine, look closely here, uh, there is no computer screen. Everything is mechanically driven. So that means, for instance, this little knob here, you can hear it clicking. There's clicks and gears moving and all this this machinery inside of it. Also with our zigzag stitches and our needle placement, same exact thing, gears moving to change everything. Along with, you have pressure foot pressure as well, you have the ability to adjust that, which is not common in a machine this size. Um, all around, pretty cool aesthetics here. Now we're gonna jump onto brunette.com real quick and give you guys some stats on this machine. So, high speed sewing at 1,100 stitches per minute. Now that's faster than anyone could ever sew accurately. Uh, you have 30 essential stitches. That's, that's all done through these knobs. Not only that, you're going to have 12 included pressure feet. Now that's, that's more than any machine you normally see. Um, especially like a machine that comes with 12 accessories, or sorry, 12 feet, normally are top of the line machines but this guy right here comes with it out of the box, which is awesome. Next thing is you also have a high quality, which is interesting for a machine this size again, high quality extension table here. And by high quality, it's, it's sturdy. This is a really good piece of plastic there. It has really nice built-in feet to help stabilize everything. We're gonna go into that here in just one minute though. Last little features here is that it has a drop-in bobbin so like most other sewing machines on the market today, it has a four millimeter stitch length. It has a six millimeter stitch width. Now, most machines in this category of machine will only have a five millimeter. So you get a little bit extra there, which is fun to have. So let's dive right on into the machine itself. I'm gonna throw on its extension table. Oh, good little fun fact here. So it's a free arm, that means this piece here, I'll slide everything out of the way. That means this piece right here is open, so you can stick like a pair of pants on it, do your hems and things like that right around the free arm. Then it comes with your slide on table, adds additional space to your workspace. Then you also have this, which I've always been a huge fan of, which is like your tray table essentially, or your accessory bin or whatever you like to call it. But it matches perfectly the color palette too of the machine. So it becomes just a nice little workstation. This guy right here will open, revealing a little cubby essentially to put in your pressure feet, anything like that, your knickknacks right in there. Especially if you're taking this places, it's nice to have everything stored in one place. Extension tables are awesome for home use. However, when you're out and about, it's really nice to just have everything in one place. So I'm a big fan of them and I love how they just kept the color palette all the way around this machine, which is nice to have. But I'll show you it with the slide on table. It works exactly the same. You uh, take your slide on table. I'm gonna flip out the little feet here. And again, these are not black. They're the blue of the same as the machine. They've really thought about the color palette here on this machine. We put it on like so, clips into place, gives you a really nice sturdy table. And then I'm gonna show it to you. It's huge. It's a really, really nice surface of for sewing. Like it's, it's done really, really well. Bevel edge on both sides with the round on top. Personally, it's my favorite kind of um, sewing station. Pull that off for everyone and let's get right on into 
accessories and what else comes in the box. So what else comes in the box, we've already mentioned the additional slide on table there. I'm gonna set it right here. And then we're gonna go into kind of the bee's knees of this box here. First of all, you have your extended warranties. Make sure you fill out these cards when you pick up your machines. Um, it's the only way you get your warranty is these little teeny cards in here. They're very, very important. Next additional thing, printed manual. I'm a big manual guy, but not only that, you have QR codes here on the back to give you additional information if you need it about the machines. Very, very well done um, all, all across the board. Just a really well done user manual. Now, if you buy a sewing machine, guys, this is just across the board. I, I don't care if someone's sewn for their entire life, okay? read your manual you might learn something new or you might learn something very specific about your machine for instance you might find out that your machine needs to be oiled in a certain place or that you might find out that you should keep better maintenance of your machines and how to do that make sure you're reading your manuals this right here is a quick read 20 minutes and then you're off to the races and it teaches you everything about your machine so this right here is a standardized foot control what I mean by that is that it's electronic foot control. This is really the only piece of electronics is this, how this works inside the machine. Um, and then it has a three pronged uh, plug in port. So that means your power cord and your foot control, if I can show them together, your power cord and your foot control are connected. Um, some people love the system, but some people do not like the system. I've always been a fan of this system because I always lose power cords. So since they're connected, it's less likely to use. You plug it straight into the machine. It works very, very well. Um, and it's just your very generic three prong with power cord connected foot control. So guys, a lot of little accessories in this machine, which is, which is cool. It's nice to have a little bit of accessories in there, but not only that to have the presser feet in here. I'm gonna just start separating this out and I'm gonna show everyone as we go. Very first thing you have a cleaning brush. Keep your machine clean, guys. You, you want that. Next thing, this is your screwdriver for taking off your needle plate if you ever need to take off your needle plate. Again, make sure you're keeping up on your maintenance of your machine. Next thing is it comes with a little extra package of needles. That way, if you break one, you've got a couple spare. However, have an extra pack always on you. The day that you don't have is the day that your needle breaks. So, from there, just going to like kind of the generic things here, you have three bobbins right there, plus an additional bobbin in the machine. Normally they come with three to, or four to five bobbins, so that's right on par there. This right here is to adjust your seam height. I, I don't know what the right way is to say this. For instance, if you're running with a denim and your denim is really thick, you cannot start your machine on an angled slant so you can slide this up underneath your presser foot or on the front of your presser foot to even out between a really big seam. That's what this is for. Um, not very many people use them unless you're working with really heavy materials. Very, very important that. Jumping onto the next thing here, you have a spool cap. It comes in a large, it also comes in a small. This is a spool cap felt. Now, the reason why spool cap felt is so important is when you're winding a bobbin, sometimes the bobbin gets out of control this will help prevent that. Not only that, it'll reduce the sound of it spinning out of control. So very nice to have a little felt pad there. Okay, from there, this is something interesting, is that this has a detachable top spool pin. So what that means is, is you've got your horizontal spool pin on your sewing machine, which is nice. Nice that we have one. This is an additional one that clips in right here on the top to give you a vertical spool pin. Now, Clip on clip off vertical spool pins, I can't say I'm a huge fan of um, for this reason alone. Once it's on, they're a little bit hard to get off. The chances of you losing them become higher because they do pull off and the chances of you forgetting that they're on and stuffing in a bag or something and breaking the spool pin is very, very high. However, since it is a detachable spool pin, they're uber cheap to replace. So kind of two-edged sword there. 99% of what we're going to use is going to fit on this horizontal pin. So just continue with the horizontal pin would be my recommendation there. Then from there, we're going to get into the last little knickknackies. This right here is a thread spool or thread cone cover. Um, essentially, you stretch it over it so your thread doesn't get out of control. Um, 
I use this a lot in embroidery. I never really use it in sewing or if I have really big spools that I'm using uh, with like a cone stand or something like that, I would use this, but I don't really use it on my everyday sewing. Um, correct me in the comments if you guys are using this on your everyday sewing machine. I haven't really found that um, while I'm going along. Next item of business is this additional, essentially screwdriver. If you're trying to get like your needle plate off and you're having a little bit of trouble with it and this guy doesn't really fit very well, um, you have a smaller one, it's especially two, it helps get into that really tight space and it works really, really well. Then from there, you have sewing machine oil. Now hold the phone here. Pretty much every sewing machine on the planet takes some form of oil. They need them. This is a mechanical driven machine. It's metal on metal gears. I'm going to refer you to the user manual on where you put your oil, okay? Because you need it. And if you need a user manual, go to um, direct to the source, burnett.com, and you can just download your user manual right there. But make sure you are using your oil and keeping up on that regularly. It really, really gives an extra life to your sewing machine. Now it's the fun part. Let's get into the feet that it comes with. Now, everyone uses feet for a bunch of different things. I'm gonna just give you kind of the generic reason why these feet exist and how you can use them in your everyday application. So foot number one that we're gonna talk about is the foot that's actually on the sewing machine here. Very, very good. It's just like your classic foot. It does your straight stitch, it does your zigzag. However, it's more like a universal decorative stitch zigzag foot. Um, and it does universal like things. However, it's not good for everything. Let me show you what I mean here. This foot here. This foot here is your zipper foot. Love a good zipper foot. Um, this is a left side, right side zipper foot, which is nice to have. This foot that's currently on the machine will not put in zippers. So you have a really nice specialty foot here for your zippers. Next one that's going on here is if you're a, if you are a dressmaker, a any kind of clothing maker, you need a good buttonhole foot. Really nice to have buttonholes, especially on a machine like this. It's uber simple buttonhole, but it does work and it works very, very well. Not only that, you stick your button on the back side of this buttonhole and you crank it down onto the button and it will show the exact size button hole for the button that you need. Makes it pretty simple there. Next item of business. This is, a lot of people call this a stitch in the ditch foot. Essentially, it has a center guide right here in the middle. So you put it right in between your, your seams to give yourself some decorative stitching, like stitch in the ditch. Or I actually use this a lot when you're doing like a, um, back up here. This is probably outside the norm is like if you're doing um, like a Biannese 2 project where you're having those two bulky pieces of material being sewn together, just smashed up against each other and zigzagged across. I like this one because it gives me kind of where my center seam is. There's a lot of applications for this, but mainly it's used for stitching the ditch. From there, it's odd to see this in a machine like this is your free motion foot. Yes, this machine can free motion which is nice. Um, is it, obviously there's a spatial cramp here a little bit, but it can do it. Smaller projects, mug rugs, um, let's say table runners, all that kind of stuff absolutely can be done on this machine and it even gives you the foot right out the box, which is nice to have. From there, you have four feet here. Now I'm not gonna get too far into these feet here. You have this foot here, specialty foot designed to do certain things. Um, I'm gonna refer you to the manual because a lot of people use these for other things than what the manual is gonna tell you to do, but you should know that. Next one right here, this itty bitty kind of stumpy little foot here. It's got two grooves in the bottom, which allows you to do cording. So this is a cording foot. It's probably a two millimeter cording foot. Maybe it's even a three millimeter cording foot. Nice to have a little cording foot in there. Then there's the letter K foot. This is a rolled hem foot. So you can do rolled hems on this machine. Absolutely. This is the foot for that. So this little guy right here appears to be a button foot. Um, I don't really use button feet at all. Um, mainly for if you're going to put on a button, put it on by hand, they're always tighter. They're always a better fit and they always work longer. So th that's my two cents on that. And then from here, this is an open toed clear foot. Now this is for 
um, decorative stitching that's a little bit thicker or that there's going to be a lot of thread in one space. Also, a lot of people will use this so they can see into their machine a little bit better because it is open toed and it is clear. A um, lot of applications for this, but it's nice that they have included an open toe foot. Then from there, so this right here is an all plastic foot and the bottom of the foot is slick. Now, people are going to refer to this as a Teflon foot. Is it a Teflon foot? Probably not. It probably got a coating on the bottom that makes it feel like a Teflon foot. But essentially what this foot does is that when you have material like a um, vinyl or anything that's plasticky, um, which you find all the time in bag making, you find this all the time in um, dress making, you'll find this all the time in random-ish projects that happen to have some form of plastic in it. A normal traditional metal foot like the one on our machine or this guy here um, sticks to the plastic. This foot does not stick to the plastic. It's really nice to have one because it's always like this weird moment where you're using a vinyl or something like that and you need the foot and you don't have it. So it's nice that it's just in the box. So you just put this in your, your tray and for a rainy day type deal. So the E foot here, this is a specialty foot. I'm gonna refer you right back into the manual for this foot, but essentially it has a bar right here in the middle of it. And the bar is not connected on the bottom. This is to allow when you're sewing, you can do like a zigzag stitch and not have it pucker your fabric at all. Or not only that, it gives a little bit of room for the thread to breathe a lot of applications for this, but you really need to know why you're using the foot. And Burnett has tutorials on how you use this foot in a lot of different applications. So I'm gonna leave it up to them to give you more information about that. Now, last little thing in the box here is this guy right here. This is a seam gauge. Now, not very people know what this is or how it works. It's pretty simple in all honesty. So I have my foot here. I have it on my sewing machine. So. How this works is right here on the back side of my pressure foot, there's a tiny little hole. You stuff this guy into that hole. And then let's say you wanna do like two inch seam, something larger than just your average seam. You measure out two inches, you put your little foot down, and then that gives you a mark every single time exactly the same. Really big in like walking foot quilting, really big in if you're doing decorative stitches on like a dress or something like that, that you can get even decorative stitching all the way across the board. Nice that they have one. A um, lot of applications for this one as well. Now that we know everything that's kind of inside the box, let's learn a little bit about the sewing machine. So a lot of people get confused with how this particular mechanical systems work. It's not as hard as what people make it out to seem. So if you look on here, there's a dial. Now the dial has three different colors on it. There's a light blue, a red, and a black. Okay, those are all different stitchings depending on which mode the machine's on. So we're currently on just your normal mode here, which is your normal classic mode. If you keep spinning the dial, you'll hear it click over. Very, very light click, everyone hear that? Now you're on stitches two, which is the kind of light grayish blue color here. If you stitch over one more time, you're on stitches one, which is your red color. And you go all the way back around, you're back to your black. It makes it super simple. You just twist the dial here and it does everything for you, right? Super simple. And to elect a stitch, same thing. You just line up with the dot here on top. Make sure your colors match up here as well. And you have your stitch that you need. Not too complicated of a system, but again, a hundred percent mechanically driven and we engage the gears, which is nice, nice to have. Now, as far as the machine itself goes, we're gonna do a quick take apart here to show you the insides of the machine. So, so I've taken off the head plate here and the very first thing is your seam metal, which is nice to see. We're, we're gonna keep going down into here um, to see what else we're going to find on this machine. So guys, I'm gonna take off the back cover here. Now, obviously, I'm gonna show you as much as I possibly can, but it is a tight space. First of all, just know full metal everything, which is great. It's, it's almost too good to be true that there's so much metal inside of this sewing machine. 
Not only that, it looks like it's all a belt, belt driven system, which is great. That's what you want to see. Extra large mold motor in the bottom here, along with metal everything. Like, I honestly don't see... The only piece that I see is plastic inside of this machine is you have your gear shifter right here, which is supposed to be plastic. I mean, they've been plastic since the 70s, so that's great. And the only one thing that I would say, you know, that is a... It's up to the, the consumer, I guess, to make the decision here is right here. There's a plastic, there's a plastic drive gear. Now I'm a huge fan of this. What well, plastic drive gear means if something got stuck in your machine and you really yarded on it, instead of destroying the important gears, it destroys the plastic one. I think it's a phenomenal system, but all the, all in all, it is a really, really solid little mach machine here and no complaints whatsoever about this this machine now let's talk about the machine itself so as far as retail value goes it's about 460 ish dollars um depending on where you get from you can pick them up online for about 400 now that's a phenomenal price point you we have to understand what we're getting and what we're buying first of all this machine is a full metal cased machine which is hard to find, especially in a $400 price point. It gives you 30 different stitches, enough, all these accessories here that they're giving you is probably a 100 plus ish retail value that you would normally have to go out and find and purchase for all your projects. They're just giving them to you. A slide on table like this, normal retail on these are about 100, $130. Not only that, to have a machine that's solid metal, this machine should run you about 400 bucks. All in all, I think your value here is well valued, probably in the six to 700-ish dollar range. However, you're getting it for only 400 bucks. I have no complaints with the machine. I love it. Is this my every day I'm gonna just use this until it dies machine? No, not in particularly. This machine for me is like your spare machine. This is your class machine. This could be, if you do um, RV trips and stuff like that, this is a phenomenal compact machine. Has everything that you need, nothing extra. And with that as well is, it even has the things that you might need in accessories. So all in all, I think Bert Burnett has done a phenomenal job on this machine and making a really nice, good, hearty machine. Um, but like we've said in the past here, guys, is what do you guys think? Does anyone out there own this machine? Give us your opinion on the machine. And not only that, if you'd like to pick one up, we do sell them. So will be down in the description below. However, make sure you're making the right decisions for you. We're just trying to make sure that you have a phenomenal unboxing experience when it gets to you. Make sure guys, you let us know down in the comments if you own a, a Burnett or give us ideas of what's the next unboxing machine you'd like us to unbox. But more than anything, we want this to become a, a series and a channel where all the information is more crowd sourced. That way, people who are looking into buying a Burnett has you guys to rely on as well as Soya Quilting. So thank you so much and we'll see you next time here at Soya Quilting.